the best business management software. It supports six different languages. Attractive Outlook. Permission based submenu. Automatic database backup. Auto record audit reports. Stock report shows clear stock position. All accounts manage automatically. And many more. Welcome to Adil's software introduction video. Another product from Adil's work. Here is the agenda of the video. First of all, short introduction of the software. Then what technologies are used. Then purpose of making this video. Then multi-language subtitle. Then important information regarding language of the software. Then suggestion regarding video length of the software. And in the last, detailed practical demonstration of the software. So let's proceed toward first agenda, which is short introduction of the software. my this video is about the introduction of my desktop application software business management system software have following key functionalities this desktop application software is available in six different languages out of these six you can choose any language without using an internet connection. Not like web application in which at one click you can do translation in any desired language with the help of internet connection. In this application, all translations are set up manually and you can switch between languages without online connection. And here are these six languages. I will discuss them in detail at the time of practical demonstration of the software. So let's proceed to the next key functionality of the software. In this software, owner can grant permissions to employees for certain tasks and can stop access of certain tasks. Here is the screen for granting permissions. From here, by adding a tick mark on checkbox of respective functionality, business owner can grant permissions and by removing the tick mark, can remove the permissions. With the help of auto-recorded audit reports, owner can keep track of all the activities performed. He can see who enter records, who edits, and who delete, and when they perform these activities. These reports can be print and can be exported in any format. Here is the example of product audit report. As you are watching here, the first column, the role title, and then the role name and the action performed. Administrator admin one, insert a new record at this date, at this time, 
and here is the detail of the record similarly operator operator number seven uh, existing record updated he updated the record at this date at this time and here is the detail of the editing which he do and then the super admin Adil Bunan Qureshi delete a record at this date at this time and here is the deleted record which he delete so similarly you can see other audit reports like this protocol reports here is a list of all formats in which you can export report almost all necessary formats are there pdf the most common one then the csv microsoft excel microsoft word rich text format xml so you can print report as well as export report in these formats which i have shown here software automatically backup its database on daily basis manual option is also there which can prevent any kind of data loss here is the automatic database backup screen which explained that it is already operational no action needed and further it explained that at what time daily it takes data backup and uh, if you want to change you can contact developer here is database manual backup screen from here you have to browse appropriate path or paste selected path for backup file if you want to enter some logical name for backup file you can enter here it's optional backup file can be saved without this optional name after saving database the database file will be saved with the bak file extension and with the combination of automatic name and the optional name and it will look like this as shown on screen comprehensive sales report gives business owner a quick look into how much they are selling with clear reports they can sell more and make better business decisions here is an example of comprehensive sales product report between two specific dates the report is very clear and self-explanatory also at the end there is a summary of the entire report with the help of stock report you can check opening stock position total purchases total sale total return total damage and closing stock position of any particular product between particular time interval here is an example of stock report there are two more stock reports are there with some variations this stock report is supplier wise in this report products are grouped by material type then there is a total of every group and like other reports at the end there is a summary of entire report in this software all receivable and all payable accounts managed automatically journal journal trial balance and profit and loss statement can be printed anytime here is the outlook of these three reports you can see how these reports look like this software lets the owners know when the employees join and when they leave and how they are working and how they are performing their assigned tasks here's the employee form you can see there is a employment date current salary 
starting date has employee left if yes then what is the uh, date of left and what is the reason behind that left and if employees rejoined then what is the rejoining date and uh, regarding performance owner can consult uh, audit report of that uh, employee as well this software have role based login functionality here is the login screen as you are watching in title position drop down if you select administrator then the next drop down will show all the administrator similarly if you select operator in drop down then the next drop down will show all the operators so this mean that uh, role based login functionality So that's all from short introduction of the software. All this which we have discussed here in short introduction and many more functionalities, I will discuss in the portion detailed practical demonstration of the software. So let's proceed toward the next agenda, which is what technologies I used. Well, as far as the question is concerned that what technologies I used or what development tools I used for the preparation of this software. So the answer is this is a Windows form desktop client application software for Windows operating system. Its front end is developed in C sharp .NET framework which is a modern, highly versatile and object-oriented programming language. And on backend, MS SQL Server database is used. While working in .NET framework in place of using Hibernate and Entity framework, I use custom framework. Crystal porting and RDLC reports both have been used for the reporting purposes. Purpose of making this video. There are three main reasons why I am producing such a long video. First purpose of making this video is instead of sitting with current software buyer and his employees for a long time and explaining to them every single functionality of the software, I can recommend them to watch this video. And it's a better alternative to prolong sitting. Secondly, some features of this software are designed only for the business owner. So the business owner should use them. But if he does not know them, how he can use them? My experience has taught me that when deploying software or meeting with the owner, I don't have time to explain these type of functions to the business owner. Or sometimes the business owner cannot devote enough time to this purpose in the meeting. So recommending this video is the best option. He can watch this video in his free time. Third, I can recommend this video to other people. Any of them could be my future customers and they can see what kind of features my software has and how it works. Suggestion regarding video length. One thing I want to admit here is that this video is a bit long 
and that's because I try to summarize all the features of the software. So due to the length of the video, it is difficult for viewers to watch all the video at one time. I will suggest one thing that can help viewer while watching this video. I would suggest viewers to watch this video subject wise or topic wise. See as many topic as you can in one sitting and leave the rest for next time. There are three different ways you can approach a particular topic. Hovering over the playhead, you will notice that it has a time mark or sections. One section means one topic. And by clicking on that section, you can jump to that particular topic. And you can also adjust the playback speed of your desire. You can find this playback speed by clicking on the setting button on YouTube video screen. Suppose if you choose 2x speed and you are watching a 10 minutes long video, with 2x speed you can complete that video in 5 minutes. Another way by which you can approach a particular topic is by chapters or key moments. By clicking on a particular key moments, you can also jump to that particular topic. You can find the key moments below the description on YouTube video. The next way to approach a particular topic is through description. If you focus on the contents of this video in the YouTube video description, you will notice that some of them have timestamps along with the titles. These timestamps are linked to that specific topic. You can jump to topic by clicking on that timestamp. Multi-language subtitle. One more thing I want to tell the viewers of this video that this YouTube video of mine is available with subtitles, oblique closed captions, or written translation on screen in 12 most spoken languages of the world for better understanding. On YouTube video, if you click on this CC button, which is stand for closed caption, then the default language of the video will display it, which is English as you're watching here. But if you click on this setting button, then go to subtitles, then you will see all other languages available. First of all is Arabic, then Bengali, Chinese, English, French, German, Hindi, Italian, Portuguese, Russian, Spanish, Urdu. So all 12 most spoken languages of the world are available here. And the viewer of this video can select any language of their choice for better understanding. Important announcement regarding spoken language. I want to let my viewers know that I am not a native English speaker. So I apologize in advance if I have made any grammatical or sentence mistake while explaining my work. Please accept my apologies in advance. Thank you.
practical demonstration of the software. Let's jump into the main part of the video, which is the detailed practical demonstration of the software. In this part, I have tried to explain functionalities of the software. So let's go toward the first thing, how to install this software in your computer. So let's start installation. So first of all, go to the files uh, that were provided to you by the software developer. And this will be a compressed file like this, as you are watching on the screen. Right click on it and extract the contents of the file. When you open the extracted folder, you will find two files in that folder. First one is uh, installer and second one is product key. So just double click on uh, installer and it will install the software for you like this. Installer welcome visit screen appears and the installer will guide you through the steps required to install the DBS software on your computer. Click next then it asks the folder where you want to put the software it will create a folder in c drive then the company name then the uh, setup name click next next and it will install software for you when it finish then the installation complete windows appear. Just close it and click on the shortcut which is created by the software wizard. Few moments later, a first screen of the software with six different languages will appear which shows that the software has been installed successfully. If you are using Windows operating system, then go to the control panel and then go to the programs and features option there here you will notice that the latest option is this dbs software setup which is just installed few months before and here is the publisher's name adil's work private limited here is the install date and time then size then the version and at the bottom, and you can see the logo of the software, Adil's work, private limited is the company name. So from here, whenever you want, you can uninstall this software from the option of uninstall or change a program of the Windows operating system. So as I have told you before, the software is available in six different languages. First of them is English. Then the second one is Doge from Germany. The third one is Urdu from Pakistan. The fourth one is Arabia from Morocco. Then the Portuguese from Portugal. Then the French from the France. So first of all, I will proceed with the English language. Then the later on, I will show you the other languages as well. So let's start with English. It's loading. Here's the login screen appear. And here, welcome banner says, welcome to login screen. Here the software name, and here the business name. From this portion, user have to select a title position from this drop down. And if user select a one option from this drop down, then the second drop down will show the subcategory of this title position. For example, if I choose a administrator from this drop down, 
The second dropdown will show all the subcategories of the administrators here. Similarly, if I choose a operator in this dropdown, and this dropdown will show the all subcategories of operators. And this portion have some instructions for user login. First of them is password is a case sensitive. What it's mean? It's mean that software differentiate between capital and lowercase letter. For example, user type a capital A and lower A. So software differentiate between both of them means software make difference. Software understand a difference. Software think that these are two different characters. So please be careful when you type a password. The second instruction is if you are already existing user and your name is not in the list, this one, this list. Perhaps because of unactive status, please contact owners for reactivations. Very clear. The third instruction is if you forget your password, then please contact business owner for new password. This is also very simple and clear. And at the bottom of the screen, current language is mentioned, which is English. So let's proceed with the login form. If I choose a title position business owner, that name came here. I type a password here and press login. One more thing I want to show you here. If user type a wrong password, then the authentication message appear, which shows that provided password do not match with the existing password. Please try again. This is your wrong attempt number one. After three wrong attempts, the software log and close automatically. So type a password and press login. A form appears which shows hardware information of computer like uh, computer owner's name, processor information, and the CPU speed, physical memory, MAC address, clock speed, and uh, install operating system. So nothing to do with this information, just click OK. In a few moments, a license form appeared because it's the first time user is logging the system. So license form appeared and it asks for the name and the license key. So open the files which provided by the software developer and open this product key notepad file and copy these contents from here. First of them is product key and the second one is the license key. So here I will type the name and product key provided by the software developer and press enter. And the message appears, congratulations, license key is matched with, the, with your system information. Thank you very much for buying this software. Okay. Product key is successfully added to the software system. And here's the desktop or main screen appears. Before exploring further functionalities of this main screen, I want to show you one thing. So let's sign out and sign in again. As you seen that after entering correct power keys, the hardware information form and the license form do not appear again. It's because when you enter a correct product key, it attached with the system information and it prevents license form to appear again. So if you don't enter the correct product key first time and you start trial, this license form appear again and again until the trial expire or you enter the uh, correct product key. 
So this thing I want to show you. So let's dig out the functionalities of the main screen and see what kind of functionalities are available here on our main screen. So first of all, and there is a name business management system then the label main screen and uh, at the bottom of this there are some boxes which express some figures this box represent a number which express total number of suppliers and then the next one this figure express total number of products available at this time then next one is total number of customers and all these figures of these boxes are in real time means if a user added a customer this figure automatically will be increased and if user delete a customer this figure automatically will be decreased and after customer there is employees total number of employees then total number of users then here this figure express total number of purchases how many um, purchase invoices are available at this time and after that total number of sale invoices this one and then total number of uh, damage invoices and after that total number of return invoices and total returns this number express and under these boxes there is a some label here and it shows the current language of the software which is english at this time as you are watching here and uh, at the bottom of the screen there is a some strip here this one uh, with the red color background and the yellow foreground color uh, basically it's an animated strip which moves from left side to right side and here are two buttons on the right down corner which controls the movement of this strip animated strip basically it's a uh, it's a loop for each loop i use here and it can be started and it can be stopped so it's a not a uh, heavy kind of stuff which which uh, consume a lot of memory of the uh, resources so what are the contents of this strip uh, first there is a business owner which is the title role and the second one is the name of the this title role for the better understanding of uh, these things i will sign out and sign in again sign out current user and for logging this time i will choose administrator from this drop down and from here i will choose admin 3 type a password and login as you are watching here on the animated strip administrator is mentioned here and admin 3 Faisal Imran is mentioned here okay let me do it again one more time sign out and sign in again and this time i will choose operator and from here i will choose operator number five as you are watching on the animated strip operating is mentioned here this one and here operator number five is mentioned here so it's clear it's the title and it's the name And here are the buttons which control the movements of the animated strip like this if I press the play button the animator will start like this and it's in the form of loop as it will reach here it will start it again from there and from the pass button animation will pass so I think it's clear 
The next thing on main screen is menus and submenus. As you people are watching, at the top of the main screen, there is a main menu bar. And on left hand side, there are menu buttons. And in the center, there are sub menus. This main menu bar is only for honor, honor of the business. And these left hand side buttons are for all other users. And this center sub menus, these are permission based buttons and they will be displayed according to the permissions assigned to the user by the owner. So in short, I will explain this thing in, uh, in uh, permission portion. And I will explain permissions and users, then I will explain this thing there. For example, here in invoice entries, as you people are watching, there are 12 sub menus are here. The same as here 12 sub menus. But uh, as I told you that it is permission based, these sub menus are permission based, but these are not permission based. This is and this main menu is only for uh, honor business honor and at this time i am uh, signing with a business honor account so that's why you are watching this main menu uh, main menu bar here if you uh, log in the software system with some other menu like suppose if you are logging with the operator then you will not see this uh, main menu bar here only this button will be display here and and the sub menu set but Perhaps if you are logging with the operator, then operator have only these two buttons here. And all these 12 buttons are not available. It is because these buttons are permission based. And if uh, owner allow, if business owner allow, then you can see these functionalities in the software. Otherwise, they will be hidden. I will explain this thing in uh, permission portion. When I will explain permissions, I will uh, explain it there. So here only short overview of the menus in English so I will start this short overview of menus from these buttons from the bottom of these buttons the last button is way out here and similarly the last way out here the two sub menus and here two sub menus and this S shape indicators indicates that this is S stand for sub menu this as in shape indicator stand for sub menu here this is sub menu this is the sub menu of way out here so that's why it indicates the sub menu of way out similarly the language one button change current language change current language sub menu about there are three buttons about application about developer about system similarly about application version about developer and about hardware the next is database backup and here database backup and here notice that one thing uh, button says only owner have access of restoration of database at main menu bar it means that this function is not available for other users this one restore backup and here there is no restore backup only manual backup and automatic backup these two buttons are here these are available here and still these two buttons can be hidden as the as i told you it's permission based i will uh, let you know there in uh, permission portion but this portion is uh, not available for all others only honor can access from main menu bar and if it is not uh, if login user is not honor then main menu bar will be hidden so i think it's clear so next is accounts similarly here accounts audit reports again same text only owner have access of these reports at the main menu these all reports are only for owners so that's the reason why these are not available here for all other users only owner can access these reports these audit reports at main menu 
and all other user cannot access because uh, these report have some uh, secure information so that's the reason why it is available only for honor i designed this software like this that it is only for honor not for other, all other users okay then the next is reporting some menus here here are some menus user management again here user management only user have access at main menu bar uh, what kind of access these three buttons add new user manage all user and uh, user permission management all these three buttons are available only for honor only business owner can add a new user only business owner can edit or delete new user and only business owner can assign a permission to any user so this is the right of a business owner all other users cannot do these things similarly uh, duplicate invoices here same invoice entries invoices entries same the first menu is structure menu all this is five now quick overview of the menus in english about version here here about this form shows the about uh, version and license business management system copyright to others work all right reserve release date is this license given to sajid amud dbs game we have berlin germany and this is the product key the next is uh, about developer this is all about developer name company contact email contact address will be available on demand and uh, the next thing i will explain this thing i think i should explain this thing in other languages first then i will explain in english later on so let's start with the other languages for switching language from one language to another language you have to go to uh, language menu here and click on a button change current language either from here or either from main menu bar the first form appear the first form of the software with six different languages so after english there is doge from germany just click on it and see how the softwares look like in dutch so let's proceed with dutch as you are watching all instructions are in german this is a picture and uh, i paste this picture in english so that's why nothing changed in this picture and here also the titles are changed in german now and the contents of these drop down boxes are also in english because and they are uh, the data is coming from database and data is saved in english if you save data in other language other than english then it will Display the same as it was saved in database. So log in with the honor and button is also in German now. And at the bottom of the uh, form, it also displays the Dutch language. as you are watching all things are in german now first menu save here and here second all menus are in german third menu
Ford's menu. The same thing which I have explained in English before, as you are watching in German now. In English, it's called order reports. Here accounts. Database backup. About in German. Sprash language. Hmm. And Auswag way out. So let's see the form about and versions. You can see the title also in German. And uh, about about uh, uh, developer. And uh, database backup automatic database backup in German okay and that's it I think I should switch some other language the next language the next language is Urdu as you people are watching here so just click on it and see how the software look like in Urdu data load ho raha hai data is loading in Urdu and uh, one thing you will notice that before this panel was on left side and now on right side because uh, language like Urdu and uh, Arabic they are they start from right to left opposite of English which is from left to right so Urdu start from right to left so that's why the menu is switched from right to left here choose a title again data is coming from database so that's why it is in English here uh, this is picture which is in English nothing changed in picture but the text which was in English it converted to Urdu instructions Not the and and at the bottom also you can see the selected languages Urdu. Okay, login. Login current. This animated strip still in English because the data is coming from database. I don't change anything. But all menus are switched from uh, English to Urdu. And I also don't change from left to right because if I change it from left to right, all setting will be changed. So just translation. First menu first. You can see all Urdu. And here also all Urdu second menu second menu here all same like this third menu reports fourth menu audit reports are minor reports in Urdu and it says the same message which I told you in English that nothing will be display here and it's only honors right so you can access it here honor reports uh, sorry audit reports for honors only
then accounts katajat katajat then database backup database backup and about version and license business management system version one copyrights other works release date license given to and product key okay similarly here about the software developer software banana wale ke baare mein banana wale ka naam name in urdu company name in urdu email in english address in urdu if mutalba aur muhayya kiya jayega mean it will be available on demand similarly address mutalba par muhayya kar diya jayega okay then the language mujuda language ko tabdil kare change language if you want bahir ka rasta mean go out or way out so let's switch and here also customers products supplier gahak masnuat supplier mulazimin sarifin purchased sale damages and return and at the end the language title muntakhib par das zuban hai urdu so let's switch the next is arabia Similarly, all titles are in Arabic. Here also, login, tasjil al dakhul, tasjil al tasjil al dakhul, and lawa halia hiya hiya Arabia. All menus are in Arabic. No khraj mean way out. Loga mean uh, language. About about uh, version. About a version. Hasan mean okay. About. Uh, software developer here all in an arabic hasanan okay so that's it i think switch next one next one portuguese from portugal loading data all titles are in portuguese now here Instructions are also in our in Portuguese language title in Portuguese. Login button Portuguese. This animated strip automatically start as the software start. This animated uh, strip start moving from left to right until you pause it. let it reach at the end as as it will touch the button it will go to the first position here so i will pause it like this so you can see all menus are in uh, portuguese here also
way out switch language or change language about version so let's switch next one the last language French loading data in English all instructions are in French now titles are in French language title is in French all menus are translated to French now here also way out language change about and here at the in the last language title also in French so that's it I think about different languages so let's start the explanation of the main functionalities of the software uh, so first go to the main menu or uh, click on a product management either from here or you can click here also because the same things here product management so just click on a button a product form will appear as you are watching that every button have an animation on it add new something is producing new Similarly, the update button, something is updating, coming up, moving up. So it's been changing something, updating. Similarly, the delete button, something goes to in dustbin and dustbin become empty. Similarly, printer printing up paper. So next one, close button moving here, there, like a clock. And changing the color similarly the reset button there's a circle on it and uh, sign of recycle and uh, the next one is search button magnifier is going here there and searching something in the contents so the animation of each button is very clear and shows the meaning of that particular button Suppose the case of a multi-language environment where a person is using the software in Arabic or Urdu or in, an, or in any language other than English and that person cannot read the words, English words written on these buttons. Even after watching the animation of these buttons, that person can understand the purpose of these buttons. So the animation is clearly expressing the meaning clearly explaining explaining the meaning of these buttons and that was the and that was the main reason for creating the animation of those buttons hope you people understand and the important thing is the all button animations can be controlled with this button the turn this button on if you want to see the animation and turn this button off to stop the animation like the animated strip which I have shown you earlier on the main screen so along with these buttons there is a data grid view here this one which you are watching and uh, there is a text box type text here for search and there is a some uh, drop down which contain all the names of columns of this data grid from here you can search the data and uh, if you click anywhere in this data grid on any record then the picture attached with that record will be shown on here in picture box portion suppose if I click on number one record then the picture attached with number one record will be shown here 
and similarly if i if i click on some record the stock of that particular product will be shown here like this at this time uh, current stock of uh, product number one is triple two if i click on number three the current stock of product number three is 392 and the picture attached with this uh, uh, record is this one and uh, you can sort by clicking on the top row of the this uh, data grid view suppose if you want to sort by a category type you can click on this category head and you can see this small arrow here so it's mean that it's showing this column is sort by category type now all artificial leathers together canvas bags together real bags together uh, but now the sequence of the product id is changed because now the data is sorted by category type similarly if you click on a uh, supplier name the same name will be sorted you can see all b on same place all o on same place s on same place so the data is sorted by a supplier name now similarly if i click on product id then it is alphabetically ordered 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so here's a data grid view and then uh, here are the buttons of search and searching and one more thing i want to show you that you can access these buttons add new uh, update delete by right clicking on this data grid view suppose if i want to add a new record i can click from here also and from here also similarly if i want to edit something or i want to update some record i will i just i will just uh, right click on that record and right click and update or from here update similarly if i want to delete some product then i then first i have to select that particular product to, to which i want to delete then uh, after selecting i have to choose delete from there or from right click menu so let's click on a add new and see how i can add a new product in product form so here's a new product adding screen at the top of screen there is a, a title here new product adding screen then after that complete unique product name this means the name should be unique and it should be complete and then after this there is a box with the price here you have to enter a price cotton buying price we have to enter here then the other one is other text box is black and then again cotton sale price is white and then the other one is black the reason behind this color black is that these boxes are not editable you have to put some figure here and it automatically it will come here it will calculate price i will uh, show you afterward when i will uh, enter a product i will show you then after that there is a category portion you have to select the appropriate category type then main category then subcategory and you will notice that the color of drop down is gray and here color of drop down is black the same reason behind these drop downs are not editable once you select some uh, something here it cannot be editable but here editable so this is the difference between gray color and uh, black color so after that it is a model number then number of colors number of uh, a unit per color they are one one by default the reason behind this that when you are entering a product at least it should be a one product so that's why there is one and the number of colors should be one that's why there is one and then after that there is supplier you have to select a appropriate supplier from here and in the end there is a product status active and inactive and uh, there is a star with mandatory field it means that the fields which have star with them they are mandatory they should be filled they must be filled out if you don't filled out the form will be not acceptable and on the left hand side there is a picture portion you can select a picture if you want to do then there is a save and exit so this is the quick overview of the product form so let's see how the product save i will save a test product then i will show you so just for the purpose of uh, experiment i will type a test and then i will press save button a error message appear which state that the product status should be selected either active or inactive
so I should select the product status active okay so now the cotton price is required so you must put a cotton price I will put here suppose 10 and here 20 you will notice that as I press 20 here and calculation is processed suppose I put a number of product here uh, 5 then see what happened you can see calculate automatically if there are five products in one cotton and the price is 10 then the unit price should be 2 similarly if there is a five units in a cotton and the sale price is 20 so it's mean the unit sale price will be 4 so these two black boxes are automatically calculated and they are not editable so let's press a save and see what happened product name is already exist please type some unique name as the unique mention here you must enter a unique name otherwise the form will not saved okay I will, I will add one with test and see what happen okay now success new record is added successfully and this test one will be shown at the bottom of the data grid view here you can see test is already available here so that's the reason why it was not acceptable before so that's why I select test one now two tests are there test one and test and test one okay let's do it again add a product uh, okay now the ID is 20 so I will take a name of product PRB product number 20 and I will take a price of uh, 50 price of 80 as you are watching that I put price 8, uh, 50 and it calculated the unit price is 50 because the cotton contain one product so suppose if I put a 10 here now see you can see if there is 10 products in one cotton the buying price will be 5 per unit if there is 10 unit per cotton then the sale price will be 8 for each one so these are automatically calculated and not editable and here category suppose I select a real leather and here cow leather it is editable as I told you before in gray color is editable and black color is not editable plain leather okay model number no model number and supplier is GmbH, Berlin GmbH and notice they are not readable and active and I suppose I take a picture as well number 20 picture yeah picture of product number 20 is new record is added successfully okay and let's see ah, here you can see the bottom picture of order number 20 uh, picture of product number 20 is saved now so here's the process of saving a new product now let's see how we can edit a product or update a product so first of all we have to click that product to which we want to edit uh, to which we want to update suppose uh, in this case i just enter a product product number 20 this one just right click on this then update or from here update now the screen appears with the label product updating screen all text fields are filled with the data which i have just entered before some time when i was entering this product product number 20 id is 20 not readable okay i will change this product name to product latest and i will change the price to you can say 20 40 artificial leather back model number latest and uh, number of color five per 
uh, one more thing if you try to enter uh, character by mistake or by deliberately then the error message appears that only positive number from 1 to 9 are allowed same in this box and same in these boxes if you try to put some character like a, a b c d like this like this character instead of number if you don't try to put number and you try to put character then this uh, error appear like this only positive number 999.99 numbers are allowed and here in this case if i try to put character only positive number one to nine numbers are allowed so this is one of the functionality supplier i will shanghai and this is active okay mandatory and uh, same product picture save the record is updated successfully here I just change the product name and the buying price and buying uh, cotton buying price and it automatically change the unit buying price. So let's see what happened. You can see the last product is changed now product latest. So in this way we can uh, edit the product or we can update the product. Okay, now the last thing is how we can delete. Same process. First, we have to uh, click that product or click that record to which we want to delete. For example, I want to uh, delete this record, record number 18, test. And I want to select this first, then I can delete from here or from right click. So I'll delete from here. It will re ensure. Do you really want to delete this product? Yes. Okay, product is successfully deleted from the system. And after I refresh, there is no number 18 now. Similarly, if I want to delete number 19, really want to delete? Yes. So here the product is deleted now. You are, as you are watching, there is no number 19 here, 17 and 20. And then the print functionality. If you want to print, click this print button. A report will appear with all product details so if you want to print you can print it from here or if you want to save in some any other format you can save it from there I will show you like this export in this is crystal report you can save it in Excel you can save it in word format you can save in text format RTF XML format and PDF as well and CVS so there are different formats in which we can save this report if you want to save I don't want to save in anyone I just want to print click here print report and it will print it from here so here are the print functionalities the last thing on this product form is the functionality of search which we can do from this search text box it stated that type text here for search so if you want to search something you can uh, type it there suppose for example i want to i want to search a p and if i click and if i click uh, search button without selecting anything from this drop down then it will search in all columns and search p here is the result of search p here is p and in this row uh, here is p and then p p p p p p all p searched but uh, sometimes we have a scenario that we have to search in a particular column suppose like you want to search i want to search only in a product name uh, text which you want to search in this product name column and then select a column number from here and then search it will result only from this column similarly if i want to search in a product id product id number five then it will search five from here suppose we have a scenario that i want to search at the rate sign if i click search search in all it will give me the all result here you can see 
all this column have um, at sign product name category all this so this is the drawback of search in all but sometime if you want to search uh, at the red sign in, in some particular column suppose I want to search in a main category column then I will select a main category and then search then only one row will be searched and here is the main category similarly if I want to search it again Will give me all this result i want to search in model number here search uh, select the model number uh, column name from this search in uh, and drop down and then press search button it will search only one column and here is the at the rate sign in model number so this is kind of dynamic search search in all um, all in one type kind of search you can say so that's it from the product form so after the product management form the next form is supplier management here also in uh, main menu second option is supplier management so let's click on it and see how the supplier management form look like let's proceed here's the supplier form and it looks exactly like what the product form looked like and it has the same buttons all these buttons it has the same buttons that were in the product form and of course these buttons have the same functionalities as the product forms button so i will not explain them again if you want to know please uh, see product form button explanation i will proceed toward next form and we'll show you how the add new supplier form looked like from here so let's click on this button add new new supplier adding screen appears as you people are watching here how it look like first of all there is a supplier name you have to put a name of supplier here then the contact person and his designation then the address here is the country drop down please select a country here and this information box state that if if desired country is not available in drop down then please go to the uh, category form and add new country there then you will be able to find in this drop down similarly the same message almost the same message here also if desired region is not available then go to the uh, category form menu add and here also if desired city is not available then go to the category and add city so then uh, after postcode then phone fax phone to supplier type um, distributor manufacturer there are different types then uh, class a very good good average poor closing day at which day the supplier close friday no record sunday tuesday one day text number website email and then here and this uh, label mandatory fields mean the fields which have star with them they are mandatory you must fill them so for the experimental purpose i will type a test supplier here test supplier then uh, contact person any name Uh, his designation is manager and save supplier address is required oh i forget that these fields are mandatory as i told you before so now it is highlighted as a red and there is a exclamation mark with this i must fill out the address some address and save phone number is required this one same functionality which i have shown you in product form only positive numbers 0 to 9 and only 10 characters are allowed so it means there is no alphabets a b c d is not allowed no sign at the sign at sign dollar sign euro sign nothing only numbers are allowed in this text field and and, and numbers should be at least 10 
not uh, more than that <coughs> so after putting some numbers phone to save new record is added successfully and here you can say test supplier or oh, there's two test supplier so here how you can add the supplier and the same process of deleting and updating which i show you in product form right click update and right click delete so i will delete this one delete and i will update this one and here the record number eight appears here i don't want to close it so i think uh, that's it from the supplier form after the product management and supplier management the third form is employees management form as you are watching here so let's click it and see how it look like so here's the employee form and uh, it also look like the product form and uh, contain almost the same buttons which the product form contain and the same functionalities as well so i will proceed further and i will show you how the add new employee form look like and what kind of functionalities it have so let's proceed and see how the employee add form look like so here's the new record adding screen so first of all there is a job title you have to select one appropriate job title then there is name then gender male female transgender don't know and i see date of birth dob date of birth then the contact detail in contact detail there is address country region city postcode email mobile landline and there is next tab is employment detail employment detail employment date current salary starting salary in euro and then has left that is that employee has left no or yes or unknown if if it is yes then there should be a, a date left then the reason left similarly leaving command if the uh, employee is leaving then there is some comments has rejoined no rejoin date if yes then what's the date so then the previous employment if is there any then qualification so there are different tabs so for the experimental purpose i will uh, add a test employee and see how it look like so first of all i will uh, uh, select a job title is a sales staff any employee and the gender is male and then i see one to one like this some date of birth then address some address and the country suppose i select up pakistan punjab and city and if you bring your mouse over this speech bubble or information bubble like this here then some text appear and it says if desired seat is not available in drop down then please go to the category form and add new city there then you will be able to find in this drop down this if i bring my mouse cursor on this uh, speech information bubble then this text appear if i uh, if i move my 
a arrow mouse arrow away from this then this disappear like this okay i will postcode some postcode uh, email landline and uh, as i will show you in previous forms these um, stars fields are mandatory fields which i almost filled and i click save error appears according to the law you cannot hire the services of person who is less than the 18 years oh date of birth should be later older okay and say current salary is required okay current salary here okay some salary starting salary okay employment date okay new record is added successfully any employee i just edit and you will see any employee appear here so this is how i can add a new record here if i want to test picture as i told you as i show you in a, a previous form like product form how to attach a image with a record with a uh, that particular record which you are entering at that time so all other features are like uh, product form so if you don't see that product form then you can go and see how the product form look like so i think that's it from the employee form in structure setup menu the last sub menu is categories management as you are watching here the last sub menu is categories management so let's click it and see what kind of functionalities it has so here is the all categories management uh, screen appears from here we can add a category update a category and delete a category suppose we have a scenario we are entering an employee which belongs from uh, Islamabad the capital of Pakistan and we are entering but there is no Islamabad available in the city uh, drop down here you can see if we go to Pakistan then we go to province of Punjab and there is no Islamabad here available so in this case we have to go to categories and we have to add a city as the this information speech bubbles describe that if desired city is not available in drop down then please go to the categories form and add a new category there then you can able to find this in in this drop down so for adding Islamabad here we have to go to category and then we have to add Islamabad here so let's try this so here's all categories management screen and we are here for putting a new city Islamabad but first we should know under which category we have to put a new city so for knowing this we should check out the category type and we should select country from here as we select the country here we will see that under the main categories and drop down there is a list of countries so from here we have to choose pakistan and uh, then we will see that under the subcategory there is a list of regions or you can say administrative units so we should put a new category with the name of capital title here so now we will put a new category under subcategory and as you people are watching here these are disabled now so for making them unable we have to go through proper channel and we have to choose country first then pakistan first then here we have to put a capital territory then save and now under capital territory we have to put a new city in main category so now click main category country Pakistan capital territory and here Islamabad so here is Islamabad is added now so we can check it from here country Pakistan capital territory and Islamabad is available here so in this way we can add a new category from the add new tab of this screen 
The next tab here is update. As the name shows, this tab is used for updating or editing the categories. For example, if we go to the country again, then Pakistan, and then Punjab, you will notice that there is a city with a wrong spell. So we can correct this from here by updating this category or by editing this category. So click many category because Lahore is here. So click this and click edit. Type a correct spell category and save. So record updated successfully and check it again from here. You will notice that all tabs are disabled now. For enabling them, you should go out of this tab and come back again in this tab. So for example, now I will go to the add new tab again and come to update again. Now you can see it is enabled. Okay, go to country, Pakistan, Punjab, and now Lahore is good. But now you will notice that there is a category no name city is there, which is a wrong. We should delete this. And we can delete this from this tab. Again, country, Pakistan, Punjab, and go to no name city. Click it and delete this one. Do you really want to delete this category? Just confirming before deleting the record. Yes. Category type with all categories under it are successfully deleted. Okay. Let's check it again. Go out, come again, and then see country, Pakistan, Punjab. And you can see now the extra category is deleted from this many categories. So in this way, we can manage all categories from here, from uh, all categories management screen. We can add new categories. We can update categories and we can delete categories. So that's it from the all categories management screen. On the menu structure setup, the last sub menu was the categories management, which we have discussed before some time. So now the next menu is invoice entries here, this one, and here, this one. So click on it, invoice entries, and there are almost 12 buttons here. Same here, 12 functionality, 12 options you can see here. Both are same. This is invoice entries on main menu, top main menu, here on the side menu. Same functionalities they have. And out of these 12 sub menus, the first one is new purchase invoice. So let's click it and see what kind of functionalities it have. So here's the new purchase screen appears. And it have several parts or several portions you can say. First of them, at the top, there is a, a purchase invoice numbers and received invoice numbers. Similarly, ship date and purchase date. In the second portion, which contain a supplier, please select a supplier and you have to select a supplier from here. The third portion. And from this third portion, you have to choose a product or search a product. And then the product detail in this product ID name, price, quantity, stock available, and then product discount available. Then add to cart, I mean add product here in this uh, grid or remove from this grid. Then the next is this grid portion. Then after that, there is a total portion. Then in the last, there is add tax, discount, and here are the buttons and on this side there are image available so let's start by explaining first of them purchase invoice is the 
first and most important documents in the inventory management bookkeeping system because from here the business initiate from here the business start before starting entries in purchase invoice you must have two things first are the products and the second thing is the supplier record of supplier from which you bought those products and when we have both of these things products and supplier then we are ready to start entering in purchase invoice and in our case if you are watching this video from the start you will note that we we do entries in product form as well and in the supplier form in a new product adding screen we have entered a new product and we also enter a supplier similarly we also enter a new supplier in a new supplier adding screen name contact person address city region and all other information we have already entered if you see this video since beginning now we are ready for doing entries in new purchase form first of all in upper portion there is a received invoice number man before this there is a purchase invoice number but it is disabled you cannot do editing in this because it is auto generated it automatically came here so you cannot do anything with this so here you have to enter a received invoice number and this received invoice number can be a combination of uh, characters like abc numbers one two three and symbols like add sign number sign dollar sign and sign any brackets anything you can enter in this so i will enter a uh, test receiving number one then the second thing is here is shift date here as you are watching shift date is the date on which the supplier send you the products suppose if you purchase product from some other country other than your residence other than your business country so in this case at the date on which that supplier send you the products is the shift date and the next one is the purchase date and purchase date is the date when those products which that supplier sent to you reached to your premises reached to your uh, office to your warehouse to your shop to your go down and whatever and wherever you have your these things the date on which you receive these products this it is called purchased date so you have to enter that purchase date here you will notice that purchase date is the today's date and uh, ship date is 15 days before date but you can change it whatever you want like here is the same month if you want to go behind here is the previous months one step more previous years one step more more previous years similarly if you want to go ahead years months and the dates so you can choose appropriate date which you want in both these dates so after entering ship date and purchase date the next thing is the supplier you have to select an appropriate supplier from which you have bought those products so from this drop down you have to select any supplier which you have already entered before suppose i select a shanghai co as you select a appropriate supplier from this drop down you will notice that the others drop downs here some data appears in them and but they are not uh, but these data is not editable only this supplier drop down is editable and you can change supplier from this but these drop downs are not editable because these drop down have data which belong from this supplier so if you select a berlin gambeha the id of berlin gambeha appears here address of berlin gambeha appears here the city appears here the country appears here and these are not editable only this drop down is changeable and one more thing you will notice that as you select an appropriate supplier here you will see some list of products suppose i select a shanghai and and you will notice that there are five products appears here in this uh, data grid view and the heading of the data grid view is active products from above supplier and it also state here only active products from this 
this arrow indicates toward this supplier only active product from this supplier can be found here and this arrow indicates in this data grid view so it's mean that these products belong to this supplier if you change the supplier from this uh, drop down the products in this data grid view will be changed so once you have a product in this data grid view then if you click on any of this product you will notice that this product appear in this products detail portion product id 7 here same the product number 7 is the name and here is the name of the product price the already available stock of this product 261 and it appears here and here you have to put a quantity the quantity which you are purchasing at this time from the supplier Shinghai and Co for the product number 7 the stock you have you are purchasing you have to enter that stock suppose uh, you can put it directly by navigating from these buttons or from uh, uh, keypad of your keyboard suppose I put a hundred and uh, if you uh, if you got some discount from the supplier you can enter it in percentage suppose I've got a 5% discount on this product and as I click 5, the calculation done here and the 5% of the total amount for the 100 quantity came here. Suppose I also got some figure discount. So suppose 12.45 is the figure discount I got. So as I enter uh, some figure here, the total came here automatically, which is 3000 now. So after this, you have to click this add to cart button, this green button, add to cart. As you press this button, you will notice that this product data will appear here in this data grid view. So in this way, you can add products as many as you want. Suppose I put one more product, uh, product number 12, and it appears here, and I put a quantity 10, then add to cart it came here suppose i put again product number one quantity 20 and add to cart it came here now i have three products total three products and total quantity is 130 the grass total for these products are 3118.30 and now if you pay tax on your this invoice the total invoice you can put it here as I put a 10 here and it will calculate the 10% of this amount and it will add to this amount here it's mean that in this amount tax is adding and now the second portion is discount and this one will be minus suppose if I got a 2% uh, discount on invoice here it was on product which I showed you before up here this was on one particular product but here this was on a whole invoice suppose I have a 10 products in one invoice I have a 15 in I can have a 15 products in one invoice I can have a 20 products in one invoice so it can be different as per your need and as per your requirement so this is for whole invoice this this, uh, this tax is on whole invoice and this discount is on whole invoice and this was on that one particular product I got a 2% discount on all these products as I put a 2 here the calculation done and 2% minus from this amount now suppose I get I, I got some figure discount as well so I will put a 61.5274 in the figure discount as well so as I came out from this text box the calculation done and it calculate in this amount this tax 10% added this one and this 2% discount minus subtract and this figure subtract and the total figure grand total figures came here so in this way calculation done in this purchase invoice and now you can save and exit save print and exit 
as you want so suppose i click save and exit and the message appear new record is added successfully so in this way you can add a new purchase invoice from this screen so after creating and saving a new purchase invoice suppose if you want to print that save invoice then you have to go to the next menu which is view all purchase invoices here in this menu second menu view all purchase invoices and on the top menu also second menu is the view all purchase invoices so as the name shows from this option you can see all the you can view all the purchase invoices which you have created uh, so let's click it and see what kind of functionalities it have so purchase invoices screen appear and here you can find all the purchase invoices available in the system the look of this screen is almost same as of product screen which we have seen before almost all buttons are same as of product screen but there are some additions here these two dates option are available because purchase invoices deal with dates so that's why here these two dates buttons are additional here in the screen and all these other buttons are same as of product screen and in explanation of product screen we have detailed discussion on them if you haven't seen that then you can go to the product menu there you can find detailed discussion regarding those buttons so here uh, go to the bottom of the screen you can you will find the uh, purchase invoice which we have just created before some time click on that invoice and then click the print button and then uh, click on yes so here's the purchase invoice report appears and I have the same data which we have just filled in the purchase invoice form at the top there is address of the business then the heading of purchase invoice page one of one printing date and time and then uh, purchase invoice number the most important thing purchase invoice number because uh, on the basis of this we can recognize our uh, invoice so that's why it's in uh, red color and yellow background because this is the most important thing uh, recording the purchase invoice then the receiver invoice number ship date receive date then the supplier data then the product which we have just entered and all details regarding the products quantity price discount figure discount total and then there is a total and uh, tax added and discount on a on a invoice not on a individual product individual product discounts are available here but on invoice discounts are available here then at the bottom of the invoice there is a total in words so here is a look of purchase invoice and if you want to export this uh, purchase invoice in different formats you can go there as i have shown you in product form you can save this purchase invoice in pdf format the most uh, famous format then the if you want to export in excel there are three different four different uh, options regarding the excel then there is two regarding word microsoft word documents you can save it then uh, rich text format rtf format xml format so here are different formats in which you can save this invoice and if you don't want to save then you can directly print from this print button print report so here is the look of purchase invoice print report So let's have a look on extra functionalities which we have in this screen and, and which were not available in the product screen. So first of all, look at the tiny square or a small box here, this one. At the left upper corner of the data grid view title bar. This is the grid view data grid view this all and here this blue one is the title bar and here's the data grid view and here at the left upper corner is a small box okay and uh, 
basically it's a small checkbox so for what this small checkbox stand for or what is the purpose of this small checkbox the answer is sorting and what is sorting sorting means grouping same things together or ranking same things together or grading same things together or ordering same things together mean uh, like if it is checked you can sort if it is not checked you cannot sort suppose if it's checked i can order this column 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 this is the order of invoice number and this one is ascending order 1 2 3 4 and once again click descending order ascending and descending here on invoice number then ascending and descending on invoice received invoice number ship date similarly received date similarly and supplier name if i uncheck this box like this now i cannot sort you know you can see now sorting is stopped so this is sorting similarly arrange same things together mean b all b are together all k are together so all s are together shanghai so this is ordering this is sorting so this small check box enable or disable sorting hopefully it is understandable so the next function which was not there in the product screen is search and dates so let's start explanation without typing anything in this uh, search box if you click this search button this one it will give you the all result all data which is available will appear in this grid view and at the bottom of the screen a search summary will appear which says that we found total invoices 29 minimum amount invoice is this maximum amount invoice is this total figure discount is this average discount is this and the total quantity found in these invoices are this so this is a summary of search I don't search anything so that's why it's giving the whole um, you can say the whole data result suppose if I search a particular thing suppose I want to search test RE and uh, you will see there are two invoices found two invoices found and total uh, tax amount in these invoices are 311.83 here's the tax amount grand total of both of them are this the minimum amount is this one because this is the minimum and the maximum is this one uh, figure discount total is figure discount is 61 this one and percentage discount is this one here this and this this and this so this search summary is a cumulative calculation of this search result whatever you type in this search text box and then click a uh, search button cumulative calculation search result will appear here in this search summary so the next thing which we haven't found in the product screen are these two dates option so first i will reset this one and now as you people are watching these two dates are disabled now so so as i click on any of the date ship date or a received date you will notice that these two date and time pickers are enabled now and this uh, search text box is disabled now because in search column as I select a ship date now they are concerned with date now 
but uh, with other uh, columns like invoice number they don't have any concern because there is no date concern in the invoice column similarly in invoice number similarly in uh, uh, supplier name id and etc so these two buttons are concerned with the uh, shipped date and the received dates so that's why they just enable at the time of select at the time of selection of uh, these two dates otherwise these date time pickers are disabled so suppose i click on a receive date and now they are enabled but before let's have a look on a receive date as you people are watching here these are all june 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 and here july only two are of august so let's try and see what happened so in from date and time picker i will choose a first of august and in two i will not change it will uh, today date so let's click on a search button and see what happens so as you are watching only two invoices are shown here because as i shown you before all other invoices are of uh, previous dates only uh, two invoices are available in, in in the month of august so that's why they shown here so this is about uh, search in dates so after the explanation of the functionality of uh, search in dates search in uh, ship date and receive dates now i will go to the printing functionality as you are watching at this time invoice number 31 is selected okay if i click on print button this one then a message box appear which state that do you really want to print selected by number 31 is a question mark click yes for printing selected invoice and click no for printing search result report suppose i click on yes and here you are watching i click yes report of purchase invoice number 31 is here suppose i will click on print button again and see what happened again the same uh, message box do you really want to print selected voice number 31 at this time i will click no as i click no one more message appears which says that do you really want to uh, print search result full report click yes for yes uh, click yes for printing full report and click no for search result short report so it's mean that on this print button there are three reports are available first one is this one selected invoice the third one is short report the, and the second one is a uh, full report so just click on yes now at this time so as you people are watching that this time it shows me two invoices invoice number 30 and invoice number purchase invoice number 31 two invoices shown here and in full detail what the uh, means full detail mean all that of the invoices are shown on this report now and here summary as well also shown report summary and total invoices found are two and all other data which we discussed before so at this time i will click again no i don't want to print 31 now i will click no at this time we say no for short report okay i will click no so at this time you are watching uh, two purchase invoices are shown here again 30 and 31 but and this time on a short format before which you've seen before sometime it was a full format all detail of invoice number 30 and invoice number 31 were shown but now only in one row 30 invoice number and 31 invoice number so let's have another example for better understanding suppose i want to search number one supply id here i select a column search in supplier id and i in a search text box i type one so it will search all supplier id with the one let's click search and as you are watching it give me the result with all uh, number one supplier id so the search summary shows that there are several invoices found and all other details you are watching with
and in this seven invoice suppose if i click uh, on number 13 i click on one invoice note only one invoice i can select at one time not multiple so i select a invoice and i print and i click on print button it the message appear do you really want to print selected device number 13 i say yes and the invoice number 13 is print you see the full invoice this is the full invoice number 13 okay now again i click on uh, button print at this time i will click no and the message appeared that do you want to print search result full report this is called search result it's the seven devices these are the result of the search so this is the search result with full report and no and search result with short report so if i click on yes then all these seven invoices which was the in search result remember the word search result all these seven invoices in the search result are printed now in the summary you can find seven invoices with full detail and third time again i click no and then again no and at this time these seven invoices are in short format only in one row in one page so this is the short format of this search result this is the call this is this data is called search result of the search so that's it from the purchase invoice screen so after the explanation of new purchase invoice and view all purchase invoices the next and last button in the purchase section is view all purchase products as you know this is the uh, purchase section these three buttons are in purchase section and here also the first section is a purchase section and there are three uh, options and then the sales section then the damage section and the return section this separator make them separate first one is purchase then sale then damage then the return so after the explanation of these two the third one is purchase products so what's the difference between purchase invoices and the purchase products before the explanation of the difference i want to show you a duplicate purchase invoice so let's have a look on a duplicate purchase invoice so here's the duplicate purchase invoice report and invoice number is 32 here you are watching 32 number purchase invoice number 32 and in this purchase invoice number 32 there is one ship date one received date one received invoice number and similarly there is one figure of uh, grand total 320 same here also as well as the bottom inwards and one uh, figure of add tax amount which is 19 percent and this is the calculation of 19 percent and similarly one figure of uh, discount in uh, percentage 25 percent discount and in figure one figure in uh, percentage discount and and similarly here uh, one record of supplier data one id one name one road but the problem is there are 10 items in this invoice as you are watching here the account invoices 10 items found here similarly quantity some quantity of these 10 uh, products subtotal of 10 products so i think you understand what i'm trying to say and same data which i have shown you against number 32 invoice this is the 32 invoice number and the all data is shown in one row one last invoice number which is the received invoice number one ship date one uh, one uh, uh, received it one supplier name one id but there was 10 products in this invoice which cannot be shown in one row so for them 10 rows are required and if we put 10 rows here against this 32 then it consume a lot of space so that's the reason why for for product 
portion there is separate uh, screen this screen is for purchase invoices so let's go out so for products this is the screen view all purchase products if you type 32 here and type invoice number and search here you will find that there are 10 products available in this 32 invoice so this is the difference between both of them so this button view all purchase invoices is for all invoices except the products products cannot be shown here view all purchase invoices shows all record of invoices except then products like i show you in uh, uh, duplicate invoice number 32 one row show all the data of invoice number 32 here in this row except then the products other than the products all data is available here for products we have to go to the other screen this is purchase invoice screen the other screen is purchase products so i think it's clear and here in this screen if you search by invoice number search in invoice number column this one by the invoice number 32 you will find the all products which i have shown you in the duplicate invoice number 32 you will find it here and uh, more things here in this screen is almost the same functionalities which i have shown you in the product uh, invoices same small square box here at the top of the title bar of uh, grid view and which start and stop sorting if i sort product id you will note that in invoice number 32 product 1 is three time and similarly product 7 also three time product 8 one time 15 one time and product 22 time and all other functionalities are the same you can search in uh, uh, columns these are the columns basically the headings of uh, the data grid view these are the column name which are shown here like supplier like uh, discount percentage discount percentage discount invoice number invoice number purchase date purchase date you know price you know price so these are the column names this one you can search in any column which you want and you can search in date wise also like i i have shown you in uh, uh, purchase invoices if you select the name of uh, date column the uh, date and time pickers enables if you click some other column name they are disabled so same functionality which i have shown you in uh, purchase invoices suppose if i click on a print result it will show you the same result which are uh, shown here in a report as well so as you are watching uh, 32 search in invoice number from this date to this date and there are 10 invoices found in this report and the product uh, product id one three times product id number seven three times product eight id one time 15 one time 22 time so this is the same which i have shown you in this purchase products so that's it from the purchase products after the explanation of purchase section all these three buttons the next is sale invoice new sale invoice so let's click it and see what kind of functionalities it has so here's the new sale invoice appears and it's almost same as of purchase invoice with little difference the difference is here in place of uh, only one supplier all supplier products are available in in purchase there was only one supplied products and here all products of all active products from all supplier and here in place of uh, supplier customer name is available so let's start explanation 
so first of all at the left upper corner there is a invoice number which is not editable and uh, it is auto generated then there is a invoice number you have to choose one invoice number from this drop down uh, in german gross handle and in english it's wholesale either you have to choose this one or ein sale in german and retail in english you have to choose one invoice type from here then uh, invoice date by default it's today's date but if you want to change you can change it then after that there is a, a selection of customer you have to choose a one appropriate customer from this drop down after selecting a customer you have to choose a product if suppose there is a huge list then you have to search suppose if you search 12 only 12 will appear so here is the search option for making ease in searching but here only uh, active products are available so choose the appropriate product then add quantity of that particular product which you have selected then add to cart similarly again select a product as you select it here and this product appears here in the product detail section just add a quantity and then add to cart like this you can add products here and the next if you want to add tax in percentage then you can add tax here suppose i put 19 percent and if you want to add discount <clears throat> then in percentage then you can put it here suppose five percent i put and similarly in figure optional if you want to put you can put otherwise you can leave it so after this save and exit save print and exit so i will click save print and exit i and i will show you how the uh, report of sale invoice look like so let's click save SGPR new record is added successfully so here's the report appear but actually on the customer demand German report is attached by default with this but uh, you can see the English uh, report as well I will show you how you have to go to duplicate invoice and from the section of sale here you can select duplicate sale invoice in English select the appropriate uh, invoice number which you want to see in English then you can see in English version the same invoice which we have just created so that's it about the sale invoice so in sales section after the new sale invoice the next one is view all sale invoice so click on this and see what kind of functionalities it has view all sale invoices so here is the view all sale invoices appear and uh, it look like same as of the view all purchase invoices same top row buttons same middle row buttons same text box same uh, search in all uh, drop down and the uh, same grid view almost and if you press search button with or without uh, uh, typing anything in the search text box it will give you the uh, report summary as well so same functionality is available here as of purchase invoice and same small checkbox for enabling and disabling starting in grid view so overall all functionalities are same as of uh, uh, purchase invoices if you want to see the detailed explanation you can see in the purchase invoices the objective of making this video is to explain the important functionalities of the software once i have explained one thing in one place so there is no need of repetition i should not explain it again and again on every form so same functionalities you can see in one place no repetition so let's proceed to the next functionality next is view all sale products so here's the screen appear and it looked like the same as of the uh, purchase products buttons are same functionalities are same so there is no need of explanation again and again same and same things so let's proceed toward next if you haven't seen explanation of these functionalities you can see in purchase products all these four buttons are same functionalities new purchase invoice new sale invoice new damage new return almost all are same i have explained in detail 
all functionalities in this one. So same functionality is here, same are here, same are here. So there is no need of repetition. If you don't see here, 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 you can you can check in this one. I will just click and show you how it look like. New damage invoice, almost the same as of the purchase invoice. Similarly, new return invoice, same. As I told you, all four are same. Similarly, all these four are same also. I have explained this one in detail. So you can see all these are, all three, these are same as of this first one. So I think we should proceed to next menu, which is the duplicate invoices. So let's check what kind of functionalities are available there. So the third menu on main menu bar and third button on the side panel is duplicate invoices. So let's click it. So here is the duplicate invoices and there are 15 sub menus are there. Same of here, 15 sub menus. So as the text of the menu shows duplicate invoices, so under this menu, all the sub menus are related to the duplicate invoices. Either it's a purchase invoice, sale invoice, damage invoice, or a return invoice. Suppose we have a scenario that we make a invoice earlier, uh, almost two months ago, six months ago, or a year ago, and now we want to take a, a print out of that particular invoice. So at this scenario, this menu works, and we can take a duplicate invoice from this menu. So let's have a quick look on these uh, duplicate invoices. Actually, we have seen these things in the invoice entries, in purchase invoice, in sale invoice, in damage and return invoices. Here, the just duplicate invoices, uh, duplicate reports of those entries which we have done before. So that's why I will take a quick look on them and then we will go ahead to the next uh, menus. So let's start with the duplicate purchase invoices. So click on it. As we click a duplicate purchase invoice form appears and it says which number of invoice you want to take a print. Please select invoice number. So I will go to this drop down and select appropriate invoice to which I want to take a print. Then I will click this button, print and exit. Our report appears with that particular invoice number which I just selected. Then the data of that invoice is shown here in this report. So this is the duplicate purchase invoice close it so next is a all time purchase invoices duplicate click on it and a form appear all time purchase invoice print and exit click this button and the reports appear here so all time purchase invoices as it shows that page 1 of 16 so 16 pages are there so we can navigate among the pages from these buttons next or previous so I'll go to the bottom one and I, you can see here total invoices found 30. So 30 invoices found in this all time purchase invoices. This one I just show you and now all time purchase products. So here purchase products report all time. So here the all products shows and it grouped by products. Product number one, all product, product number two, product number three, seven, Similarly, all products. This product number, unit price quantity, and purchase date. At which date this product has been purchased? And date is mentioned with that. And invoice number also mentioned. This product is purchased in invoice number one, and this is purchased in invoice number 32. Discount given, discount also mentioned with them. And supplier as well. So, this is all about the purchase products all time. So, the next is duplicate sale invoice in English click it as of purchase invoice it's asking please select invoice number select an appropriate invoice number then click on print and exit button and it will show you the sale invoice here the invoice number to shown in english similarly in german in uh, restaurant number so i mean invoice number two <laughs> this here one and uh, uh, similarly, duplicate sale invoice short. This is the shorter invoice number, the same as of English. The next is sale invoice between dates. 
if you click a form appears it asks you on screen or on a report suppose i click on screen then see what's happen a form appears which have a two uh, date and time pickers and then a, a show result button suppose i click on this it will show you between these two dates the result of uh, sale invoices between these days so if i want to click on some particular invoice i should select that first then i should click this print selected invoice then it will print no i don't want to print here summary shows that how many total selected days are 30 and total sale quantity is 22 total invoices found are four so four invoices found in these 30 days and quantity is 21 sale amount is this and minimum is this maximum is this so this is on a screen and if i click on report then the same thing will be printed if you want to print the next is all time sale products as of sale uh, purchase products this is sale products all time sale products report grouped by product id all uh, id number one are here two are here three and it's similarly 12. so this is all about purchase and sale similarly damage and return there's no difference between them almost the same as of purchase and sale so i will proceed to the next menu which is uh, reporting i deliberately skip this one user management because at this time we are discussing invoices reports so this invoices and these reports are almost same thing these are related things so that's why i'm going to i'm switching to the reporting menu click on this or here same things and now first of them is all product detail click on it and the product detail report will appear here which shows all the products the same which we have seen in product menu first one then the price list price list shows price of the products and then the supplier reports supplier total supply now total seven suppliers at this time then the employee reports all employee detail similarly customer customer detail so after customer report, there are three stock reports here. Stock position all products, stock position as per product status, stock position as per supplier. Here same. These three reports are very important and very useful regarding the inventory management system or the business management system so let's start explaining them how it works and how it looks like so click on stock position all products this menu a screen appears which says all product stock position and it have two dates picker from date and to date and search button so click search button it will give you some results product id name cotton price opening purchase sale return damage and closing these first four these columns are regarding the products but these columns are very important opening purchase sale return damage and closing so for better understanding i will select a product at this time this product number 10 have zero records no purchase sale return damage and closing so let's take a purchase of this product number 10 so from this screen i have bought product number 10 two times i will show you in a other screen
So here in all purchase product screen, if we search by product number 10, product ID number 10, then this results appear here. So have a look on this. Product number 10 have a product quantity uh, 70 and 30 and uh, it bought 70 quantity bought on 1st March year 2022 and quantity 30 bought on 1st February 2023. Just remember two things, two dates, one of this year, one of last year. Quantity last year is 70 and this year is 30. So that's it. So now when we open this screen, all product stock position and when we select a product number 10, then we will see that this product have a 70 opening and 30 is in purchase and total we have a uh, 100 of closing. So it's been that in this time span, which we have selected here, 1st January 2023 to the till to date, in this time span, we have bought 30 units of this product in which we already have 70 so total cumulative 100 quantity at this time we have so this is our closing quantity and this is our purchase quantity and this we already have before this date suppose now i change the date so this is the <clears throat> all current year data suppose if i change the year and i select uh, Year, 20, year 19, 2019 and I click search, then we will found that regarding number, regarding product number 10, we have zero opening. At this date, we don't have anything regarding this product. But from this date to this date, we bought 100 unit of this product and currently we have 100. Let's take a uh, let's sell some units from this product. So here I am selling 20 quantity of product number 10 and save it. And now if I open this stock position, all product stock position screen, and then I will see product number 10, 80 units are available at this time quantity of 80 available at this time 70 is opening 30 is purchased and 20 is sale and 80 is available in this time span but if i change the year then in this time span from 1st January 2021 to till to date, we bought 100 units of this product and we sell 20 units of this product and currently we have 80. I think you understand now. Similarly, if we got some return regarding this product, then return will appear here, then, then the debit will appear here, then the cumulative closing will be shown here regarding this product. So this is a product stock position screen shows. If we want to print, we can print it from here, from this button. Suppose I click this button. So here the stock position shows. So regarding product number 10, you can see zero opening, 100 purchased, 20 sale, and 80 is closing. Regarding this date, 1st January 2021 to till to date. So date is very important in this scenario. From this date to, to this date, this is the stock position of number 10. Similarly, you can see all products stocks. So this is all about stock position of all products. So let's proceed to the next one. So the next sub menu here is stock position as per product status. And before sometime which we have seen it was stock position all products and now stock position as per product status before going in the detail of this menu let's go in the previous one again and uh, check one important thing there so let's click it and see what was that so let's click if you 
press search button between the dates you will found that there are 17 products are available here all products stock position and there are 17 products okay that's it close now click this menu stock position as per product status if you click this with and between same dates you will found that there are nine products only product forms nine and they are active so it's mean that out of 17 which we have seen in last screen only nine products are active okay just confirm it if you select dormant and then click search and then you will found eight products are dormants so out of 17 eight are dormants and nine were active so it's been half of the products were uh, non-active so suppose we have a scenario that we have a thousands of products or even hundreds of products and uh, suppose we have a uh, 500 products and in, in that 500s only 150 or 120 products are active so in this case if we see the last screen then it will take more resources more energies more time more space more mental activity so it's better to sort products by active or non-active and go in this screen and see which one is the dormant and which one is active and if you want to take up point of dormant you can take it and if you want to take up point of active you can take it so let's select active products and search as we have seen before nine products are there and take up point of them print stock report click it here's the report appear stock report of active products active is highlighted in red you will notice that and the particular date which you mentioned there and it can be any and in this time span supplier berlin gambia have only one product supplier karachi have one supplier odense two paris have one and shanghai have four products in this nine this is the division of time active products detail and here the number 10 product which just seen before some time 70 was opening 30 was purchased and 20 was sale and 80 is currently available at this time in this time span which we just seen before some time in this time span so here is uh, stock position as per product status active or either non-active similarly if we see dormant one and take a print we can see in dormant products six products belong from shanghai and two products belong from uh, germany and uh, berlin gambia so that's it from stock position as per product status so next is stock position as per supplier click it and see what kind of functionalities it has in this screen you have to search a supplier first if you don't select a supplier and press search then it will say zero product found so first you have to select a supplier so suppose I select a supplier and click search then you will see there are 10 products are there in in uh, shanghai and take a point of this 10 and here this 10 products are divided into three categories one supplier have three different material types material type artificial leather material types canvas pack material type real leather and in this under this uh, uh, material type we have two products we have four we have four here so total are 10 of this supplier so this is supplier wise product stock report similarly suppose i i choose a berlin berlin gambia and take click search and print so stock report of supplier berlin gambia have total three products and one of them is a canvas bag material type and one of uh, two of them are material type real leather so this report shows that stock position of supplier Merlin Gambeha material wise total products shown here in report summary 
and you can see here also report summary as a stock position as per selected supplier so that's it about the stock position very important menus sub menus and very useful regarding the business management system inventory management systems very useful reports stock positions So after the reporting menu, the next menu is audit reports. As you are watching on the left panel, the next button is audit reports. But before proceeding to audit reports, we should cover the functionalities of user management, which we skipped before. Because as you probably remember, when I was discussing uh, duplicate invoices, and when I was explaining duplicate invoices, and after completing this, I jumped into reporting. Because at that time, I told you that these two menus have same functionalities. So that's why we should discuss these similar functions uh, menus first. Then I will cover this user management afterward. So now it's time to cover this. We have completed this duplicate devices and also reporting. And now we should cover the functionalities of user management as well. So let's click it and see what kind of functionalities the user management have. Okay, let's start. As I click on user management, you will notice that there are two buttons. The last button title, logged in user, password change. And as I bring my mouse on it, the button's color change. And uh, the first button, when I bring my mouse over it, nothing happened. It means that this button is not clickable, but this is clickable buttons. And so this is only label which state that only owner have access at main menu bar. What it's mean? It's mean that the functionality of this button only owner can access from this main menu bar. This is main menu bar. And only owner can access from this main menu bar. No one else can access this button's functionality. So, okay, let's click main menu bar function and see what kind of functionalities are there. As I click user management, you will notice that there are three options here. Add new user, manage all user and user permission management, which are not here. And in place of these three, only one label which state that only owner have access at main menu bar. And you see as this animated strip, which I discussed in the first videos, shows that business owner Sajid Ramon is currently logged in as you are watching here. And that's why this main menu bar is shown. And if some other user other than business owner logged into the system, then this main menu bar will be disappear. And this functionality is available only here in main menu bar. So that's why if some other user other than uh, business owner is logged in, these functionalities are not available in these buttons. So I think it's clear. So let's click first functionality in the user management menu, add new user. As I click on it, a new screen appears which label new user adding screen. From this screen, you can add a new user. So the first text box user ID is uh, auto-generated and not editable. Then the username uh, have a red star with this. It's mean they are mandatory. All these fields with red stars mean they are mandatory. You must fill them. So let's put some name. Test user, I will put it here. And some password. Then the user role, I just put operator and then there is option if you want to add image with this user. Suppose just for the example, I take some image. I attach my picture here, then uh, save records. New record is added successfully. So in this way, you can add a new user. So the next functionality in this submenu is manage all user. But before explaining this, I will go to the last one, which is logged in user password chain. I will explain this first, then I will go to the uh, this one. So as the name shows logged in user password chain, any person, either it's an owner or an operator or a administrator, anyone which is currently logged in 
even in my case business owner anyone which is currently logged in can change his or her password from here logged in user password chain so click it and see so here the screen appear with the title password chain scheme and with very clear words the role and the name of the currently logged in person is mentioned here that person should verify old password first suppose in case of honor i type a password on our password then i press please verify old password first button then this screen appear well done you got it provided password matched with the existing old password and then these two buttons become enable and these two become disable so if you want to uh, change the password then you should type new password then confirm password then update password but i don't want in this case so the objective of showing this screen is that the currently logged in uh, user can change password either it's a uh, admin or administrator even owner after confirming after verifying old password then they can change password okay next so now for the scenario a system user any user either it's a administrator or operator or manager any user forget his or her password so now what is the possibility and what are the options available for that user the answer is which i told you in the beginning of the uh, explanation of login form that i mentioned in the label that that person should contact to the owner so in this scenario this the next option comes manage all users from this screen business owner can manage can change can amend data of all other users suppose in this case i select the user test user which I, which i just created before some time that user forget his password so in this case owner can select his user and then press edit button a reconfirmation required do you really want to edit user id number 13 yes so after confirming you will notice that test user appears here in the uh, username text field and there is no confirmation of old password so it's mean that owner can change the password of any user without putting the old password directly owner can type a password and then confirming that new password and all other details so there is no requirement of old password here now again one scenario suppose owner is working uh, on the system and owner is logged in and because of any reason because of some reason he have to go away for uh, from screen and uh, in meanwhile some suspicious personality or some unauthorized person come and uh, he or she uh, try to steal the password of owner try to change the password of owner so they come to the owner name and they press edit button confirm but as you are watching here in case of owner old password is required so it's mean that that person uh, if uh, do not know the password of the owner he cannot change the password of the owner so because they have to before new verify old password first they have to verify the old password first then they can type new password so it's a extra uh, security features for owner but in other users case the old password is not required as i showed you earlier see again suppose if i click a other one on the super admin i click on update yes in super admin case also there is no Uh, old password required similarly simple admin edit no old password required similarly operator which i shown you before sometime you in case of test user it is operator so old password is not required so this is the only owner's authority that he can change any data regarding users 
So that's it from this screen. The next is user permission management. Let's click it and see what kind of functionalities it has. As I click on user permission management, a screen appears which have a title authentication for permission. And it have a message here. So let's read it. Attention please. Assigning rights to user is a serious matter. Mishandling in it can cause problems. That's the reason why only owner of the business can use this option. So please confirm your identity again. And for reconfirming, please enter owner's password. Sorry for inconvenience. And in this drop down, business owner is uh, mentioned and then the name, you have the password field, type password and then go to permissions button. As I click button, a screen appear with title, assigning permissions to user. And uh, please select one of the active user. So in this drop down, there are all user, active users. And I have to select one. Suppose I select the last one which I just created before some time. Test user. As I select test user, some containers containing checkboxes appears on screen and have a title. Please tick the checkbox, name the respective functionality to assign permission and vice versa. So as you people are watching the first container, this one named menu number one structure setup and there are uh, five check boxes with their names and only first of them is tick mark and all others are untick unchecked as this label says tick mark on check box means that this particular functionality from this menu menu number one structure setup is granted to test user Similarly, this one, if I tick mark, this functionality permission is granted, this is granted, and this is granted. Similarly, unchecked means permission is not granted. So for the better understanding of this permission granting concept, what I will do, I will only tick mark one checkbox from the menu, menu number one structure setup, and similarly, in menu number two, invoice entries only one checkbox, sale invoice, and similarly in third menu only one checkbox of German invoice, and in the last menu, menu number ten, way out, uh, sign out current user and exit application. These two permissions are allowed. That's it. <clears throat> and now I will log out from the current login user which is in my case is business owner and I will re-log in with the test user and I will show you how this permission grandness concept means and how they look like. So let's log out. First close this one. Then from here, way out, select sign out current user. From this login screen, I will select operator and then from this drop down, I will select test user and type a password. So, after login with the test user, as people are watching this animated strip, this one is confirming operator test user is currently logged in. And uh, the difference you will see that there is no main menu bar here at the top. There is no main menu bar. In place of that main menu bar, there is a label which state permission based sub menu and there is a arrow indicate toward this sub menu. Means this sub menus and the content of this menu is permission based which appear as the permission granted to the user. As you people have seen earlier that in permission grant screen, I have grant tick mark one checkbox from the menu, menu number one structure setup. And similarly, in menu number two invoice, entries only one checkbox, sale invoice. And similarly, in third menu, only one checkbox of German invoice. And in the last menu, menu number 10, way out, uh, sign out current user and exit application. These two permissions are allowed. One permission in this menu, one in this and one this. In structure menu, only one 
employee management as you are watching here and the one from invoice entries new sale invoice entries as you are watching and the one from here duplicate invoices the german and nothing in user management as i told you this is only owner have access at main menu bar and there is no main menu bar here so it's mean it is not accessible and uh, there is nothing in reporting nothing in all other menus about is empty language nothing here and only we out have two buttons which are uh, which permissions are granted sign out current user and exit application one from here one second from here third from here and two from here so these are the five permission which was which were granted to the uh, operator test user before so for better understanding and further clarity in the concept of granting permissions i will repeat this process again so let's do it i will sign out this test user will log in with the owner after logging with business owner i will go to user permission then user permission management assigning permission to user screen appear from here i will select test user and this time in menu number 1 i will give two permission first and last two permission in menu number 2 first and last and similarly in third menu i will give two permissions here and in menu number 10 already there are two so let's do it but before going for the changing take place you should update this one this permissions so click this button data updated successfully and now the screen is in the state of reset as you are watching here so now you can go out go out and check it again sign out login with test user so we are logged in as a test user now as you are watching this animated strip is confirming and as you are watching two buttons are visible here because two permissions are granted to the menu number 1 similarly menu number 2 two permissions are granted so that's why two buttons are visible here similarly here two buttons are visible because only two permissions are granted in this menu also and in the last one also way out both buttons are visible because permission for both these buttons are granted i think you understand now granting permission process so in this way you see by the Uh, assigning permission to user screen owner can grant to permission to any user after selecting from this menu all uh, users are available here in this list uh, owner can grant any permission to any user which he want so this is the process of granting permission and assigning permission to user i think that's it from this menu and let's proceed to the next menu was it so let's proceed to the next menu which is audit reports after completing explanation of user management functionalities we will go further and we'll explain the next functionality which is audit reports basically after user management it is reporting but we already covered this reporting so we will proceed further and we'll explain audit reports so let's click it and see what kind of functionalities it has so as i click on audit reports you will see a button appear sorry uh, label appear uh, i have explained the difference between label and button in the explanation of user management i told you at that time that if on mouse entrance the color of the uh, button change it's mean it's a clickable button and if the color do not change it's not button it's a label and what's the difference between label and button a button on click perform some particular action itself or it will refer you to some other functionality but label 
on click do not perform of any action itself because it is not clickable and definitely it will not refer you to some other functionality it's just show the text which is written on it so this is the main difference between clickable button and label so in case of audit reports we don't have any button here only a label which have a text which says that only owner have access of these reports at main menu bar so let's go to the audit reports at main menu bar and see what kind of functionalities it have uh, but before going in detail of audit reports i want to tell you why i use this word audit reports basically with the help of these reports you can inspect you can examine investigate analyze and check the activities performed regarding that reports take an example of product report here you can see all products detail reports id product name category type and all the other details regarding products for instance take example of record number 20 we can see its name product list test category artificial leather all these things regarding the product but we do not know who created this record either it was admin or it was operator and at what date that person created this record and at what time that person created this record so in this report we do not find such kind of details so as you people are watching in this particular record the cotton buying price is 20 and the cotton sale price is 40 it's mean the sale price is almost double than the buying suppose someone just add a zero with this 20 and it become 200 you buy so now this product uh, uh, price become buying price become 200 and selling price become 40 so it's mean business is selling this product on loss so if you want to know who add this zero at and what time he add this zero or she add this zero so we don't find any information in this report and suppose someone delete this product so we don't have any record that who delete this product so for all these purposes who create who amend who uh, delete the records with the help of those reports we can uh, we can get the answer of those questions so that's why i put the name audit with these reports because with the help of uh, these reports you can analyze you can uh, examine the activities performed on, on the that particular reports so let's go to the first menu of the audit reports user audit hidden for honor only basically this main menu bar all this main menu bar and all the functionalities under this main menu bar only for honor if the same functionalities of this main menu bar is not available here in these buttons so it's mean all other user cannot access those functionalities like in like in case user management we see nothing here so uh, the other user cannot access these functionalities similarly audit reports nothing here so that's why other user cannot access these functionalities so these all reports are only for honor so let's go to the first functionality of the audit reports user audit it's mean it's regarding user so let's go to the user so here we are in a user report as you are watching all user records are available here for instance let's take example of one record record number 13 the last record if you people see the explanation of menu user management in this video before you people know that we have created a record test user for some test purposes as you are watching it's a test user it's active operator and the role is kpo key punch operator or a simple computer operator so this user was created as a test purpose so let's make it dormant so as you people are watching i go to the record number 13 test user and i make it dormant before it was active i show you and now I, I make it dormant because it was test user so we don't need it in uh, future or it's a, 
or you can say it's a just uh, test purposes or a fake user so i make it dormant and if now we see the report you can check now it is dormant test user dormant and all things are same and now suppose we think that we don't need this user because it's just test user and don't need it we should delete this so let's delete it go to the user screen and select this and delete you really want to delete yes okay user 13 is deleted now see report now so as you are watching there is no record number 13 so at this point audit reports works suppose after some days or even after some months we want to see that what happened with test user either we have created some user or we delete some user we don't remember what happened so in this report we should consult uh, user audit report so let's go and see it close it close it and go to the audit report and the check first one user audit report As you click, you will note that the report appears and it shows role title, business owner, role name, the name of owner, action performed, insert new, date, time, user ID, user name, user role, and role description and status. And this first record shows that uh, business owner insert a new record on 25th of August at this time and all that this detail is regarding that uh, uh, new user so now the second record shows that the same or actually these things here come here because only in honor can access suppose in case of product you can find other names here as well also but in case of user management only honor can access so that's only honor can come here existing record update so it's been uh, honor update the record and what update upgradation honor do you can see here is the actual one active all record is same only here dormant now dormant come so at this time on this date honor uh, edit the record and make active to dormant then after some time you see you can see uh, four minutes and six minutes after two minutes uh, honor delete this record delete all this record so this is the audit report of particular uh, user one one user i selected and i show you the all activities performed on, uh, on the user so in this way you can uh, investigate who do and what he do first uh, the honor create then order uh, then honor update then honor delete Similarly, in other uh, reports, I will show you there are other user as well also, not only honor, but here only honor because it is user management authorized only to honor. That's why only honor here. So in this way, you can analyze, you can uh, honor can analyze, honor can uh, investigate what happened to those records regarding user. So this is user audit report. so let's go to the next menu on audit reports which is category audit reports it's mean that it's regarding categories so let's go to the category first then we will come here again if you watched this video since beginning then you already knows that at the explanation of all categories management functionality I have added city Islamabad in the capital territory of Pakistan. So let's check it. Pakistan capital territory and there is no Islamabad here. It's when it is deleted now. Okay, let's go to the categories. Audit report. Click it. So here you will see administrator admin 3 Faisal Imran Qureshi insert a new record on this date and at 10 o'clock and 43 minutes 
country Pakistan capital territory and Islamabad but unfortunately there is misspell in Islamabad then super admin Adil Imran Qureshi existing record updated so it's been Adil Imran Qureshi update the record and what he do he only change the spelling of Islamabad nothing change else only Islamabad spelling change Islamabad you can you can compare both of them and then next record operator uh, role title is operator operator number one existing record deleted so operator delete the record of Islamabad at this date at this time so created and on 24 and updated on 24 34 minutes 37 minutes and deleted after two days at this time so from this report you can analyze what happened with the record of Pakistan so this is the benefit of audit report so let's go to the next menu in audit report after category there is customer employees they work same as of categories and user audit report let's go to the product audit report when you come in product audit report you will see that the administrator role title is administrator administrator admin one dani insert a new record on 21st of august at nine o'clock and the record is id number 21 and test product and all the detail here you can see color available colors are five and model is this but uh, after one day the operator role title is operator and name is operator number seven existing record updated operator number seven update the record on 22 august at this time and what he do what changing what kind of change he do in the record i did not change product name not change type not change similarly uh, he changed model he changed model test model to model one to three and available color from five to eight he changed this he make this changing from five to eight he do then unit per cotton 10 and the the biggest mistake he do is here cotton buying price was 20 and he make it 200 cotton sale price is still 40 it's mean we are selling the product on loss buying in 200 and selling at 40 so against this product we are doing loss of uh, 160 so big loss then the super admin adil one krishi delete this record after one day 21st 22 23 so one day's difference and here time is mentioned and id is 21 so let's go to the product and see there go to the product detail and you will find there is no 21 so from this uh, product detail we do not find that anything here something happened regarding uh, product number 21 test product because it's not here it is deleted so how we can know something happened so we can know from audit reports of product what happened to product number 21 this id number 21 test product it was created on this date uh, uh, updated on this date and deleted on this date and who do here are the name of the responsible persons so this is all about product audit report all other audit reports are work same as of the reports which i have shown you like uh, user audit report category audit reports and product audit reports so there is no need to explain each and every one so all other works like the same which i have shown you before so that's it from the audit reports menu so let's proceed to the next one which is uh, accounts account entries
in accounts menu the first sub menu is accounts entries so let's click it and see what kind of functionality it has as you are watching a screen appear with the heading account entry form first of all there is a date selector date of entry from here you have to select appropriate date then uh, please select entry types head from this drop down there are different options first of all there is a accounts payable as i select first option accounts payable in the next drop down amount paid to supplier appears what it means as the text shows amount paid to supplier this uh, from this option you can pay back to the supplier from whom you bought products on credits so from this option you can pay back to that particular supplier suppose if i select this option then this disable drop down appear here and uh, supplier id supplier name so from here from this drop down i have to choose a supplier suppose i choose this shanghai co as i select this shanghai co these two disable text boxes uh, become enable and uh, here is a maximum payable amount of supplier shown so it's mean this amount is payable to that supplier if i change uh, supplier this is it shows zero and berlin game i have zero balance so suppose i select again shanghai co so i have to pay 5000 to this shanghai co so this is maximum payable amount to supplier and where i have to pay here if i as the text shows please enter amount if I enter amount here, then it will pay to the uh, Shanghai Go. Suppose I enter 1500 and in the next text box, narration automatically appear, cash pay to supplier payable account. You can change this narration, but I will leave it like this and I will click save record button. So the next option is supplier account report. Basically, it's a third option. The second option is a uh, salary's payment, but it relate to the activity which I just performed so i should check it so let's click this button supplier account report as i click button a screen appear with the title supplier wise accounts so it's mean from this screen you can find the supplier wise accounts suppose i select a supplier to whom i just pay some amount so let's go and select a shanghai co as i select you will notice that uh, the above supplier maximum payable amount appears here before sometime when i show you there it was 5000 and i paid 1500 so when i subtract 1500 from 5000 so 3500 left so this is the current balance of the shanghai and co so let's print and exit and see what kind of report is this so the report appears accounts report of supplier shanghai co as i told you it's a selective supplier only one supplier which i just select so that's why it's the only about shanghai and co all data regarding shanghai co okay the first column and second column is about date and time then the description here goods purchased from supplier on credit at what date at what time you purchase goods from supplier you can see and what is the amount here you can see th this is the amount and this is date and time and here you can see amount paid to supplier the, I just pay 1500 here you can see supplier amount paid to supplier is 1500 so here the dates is okay first is a date then and time the third column is description then the fourth column is stock purchased amount this is the amount of the stock which you have purchased and the fourth column is paid amount the amount which is paid back to the shanghai and co and on the bottom of this report you can see the total stock purchased amount is shown here and the total paid amount shown here so uh, stock purchased minus amount paid is equal to the balance as you are watching here total payable amount is 3500 of shanghai and co so this is the report of shanghai and co count reports so that's it close this close this i have just shown you only one option in account entries so let's go to the next one 
the account entries so from here we have to select our account head again before we select uh, accounts payable now i will select cash account as you select this account head cash account in second drop down the cash deposit to banks appear so as the word shows this is the cash deposit to bank account so here cash account had cash deposit to bank so i have to select this again for enabling this text box of for entering amount so as i select this this disable text box become enable now i can put amount suppose i put amount of uh, 800 and you can see the narration is automatically available here cash paid in business receivable account so just save this 800 in cash account save record from this option we can see the report of cash account we have which we have just uh, uh, enter here you can see 800 bank deposits accounts report of bank deposits 800 is total only one of today so close it so the next so let's go to the next option in the accounts and screen we have explained accounts payable cash account office similarly there is office expense let's check it what is this as you select office expense in other drop down furniture stationery other expenses uh, option appear in the drop down so i select this and uh, the donation showed cash paid to the furniture stationery kitchen and other office expense accounts let's pay 900 in this account and save record so from this option we can see the report as well office expense account report here you can see 900 which i just paid is shown here in accounts report of office expenses okay close it similarly here is uh, cash account office expense account similarly other accounts are here rent account is also the same process which we have seen in other options office rent pay to the owner click this option then you can uh, enter amount here suppose i put uh, 1400 and save this then you can also see the report of rent account 1400 which i just enter so like this you can put entries in the account heads from this option so that's it from the content form the let's proceed to the next option which is salaries payment as i click on salaries payment a screen appear with the title salary slip formation form and from here you can make the salary slip for any employee so as you people are watching every text box is disabled nothing is working only one drop down is enabled and from here i have to select an employee so suppose i select employee to whom i want to pay salary as a selector employee some data appear automatically like id job title and joining date regarding this uh, employee and it is uh, disabled i cannot change it from here but it just showed that this is the data of this employee and uh, starting salary is also attached with uh, this employee then the current salary is also attached it's automatically appear here and they are not editable if i want to edit this current salary then i have to go to the uh, employee form i have to edit this there okay in this salary slip form what's available payment date i can change this date but i will leave it like this which is today's date from here i have to select which salary month i'm uh, going to pay to this employee suppose i can select august i can any month all the year is available here so i select january suppose and january 2003 and then there is a current salary fuel allowance if any if i want to pay some fuel allowance suppose i put 100 and it will add to the current salary 
now it was 900 before now it become with the addition of 100 it become 1000 and this uh, plus sign shows addition and this minus sign shows deletion so some of our time allowance i want to uh, pay to the supply i can put 50 house rent 250 suppose so these are the uh, these are the addition so now subtraction start if any loan deduction suppose he have to pay loan every uh, month so like 400 he have to pay provident fund suppose 40 tax deduction 30 so this is the total salary now if you want to put some narration or any comments you can put it here so some comments here and then then press this button pay salary for saving this record and record is added successfully and after paying a salary suppose if you want to print that salary report then one option is you can print it from here salary account report it will show you the short report 830 as you are watching total salary is paid 830 this is the short report salary paid. but suppose if we want to see the detailed report so in this case you have to go to the salary report with custom selection this option then as you see some uh, screen appear selected employees salaries detail so from here you have to search the employees to whom we just paid faisal imran this one a 30 yeah the last one after searching if we press print button then the detailed salary report appears here as you are watching salary pose of apply with custom search result and here is the report date which we just put report time report year month as you are watching here i select month so month is january and salary record, uh, salary record of employee this one is, here is the name of the employee and id is this and uh, current salary was 900 over time is this fuel is this house rent here loan deduction provided fund tax deduction total salary is 830 after all calculation the 830 is the total salary so this is the custom search result so if we want to see the all employee salaries report then we can see it from uh, here also you can see if we reset it and all data appear here uh, and you can print it all cell here like this all employees data we can see with custom search result searching all uh, salary record of employee Adil Banan is here and salary record of employee Faisal Banan is here a woman Yasser Banan fake name fake woman and here is the all employees data you can see so suppose if you want to search only here you can see Adil Imran, Faisal Imran all are shown but if you want to search only one employee then you have to type that particular employee name here and then search then you can find it employee Adil Imran have a seven records suppose if I type Faisal the Faisal one has three records if I want to print salary record of employee Faisal Maran ID number two have a three records three months salary total of Faisal Maran is three months this is the total uh, salary and this is the given salary so this is all about the salary form and uh, which one is left now here account and is recovered cell is recovered show calculator so if you click on this show calculator a calculator appear as you are watching this is standard uh, windows calculator you can change it to scientific if you want it's a useful windows built-in utility i just call this on the click event of this button show calculator so the next is journal journal between dates so let's click it and see general journal what it's mean basically it's the first book in which the accounting transaction are recorded by date wise so this is the simple definition of a general journal so if you click print then the report will shown 
like this the first column is date and then the explanation and description column cash deposit to bank this is the debit entry and here is the credit entry account receivable credit debit account so the next option is in accounts trial balance between dates here trial balance and important note in this report difference must be equal to zero if it is not so then check entries there would be some mistake so here you can see account payable account receivable cash account other office expenses purchase entry rent account salary account these are all mentioned here in debit as well and credit as well and, and the difference is zero so basically i am uh, not an accountant but uh, i try to manage accounts as well but it can be improved with the consultation of some uh, professional accountant this functionality can be improved in future trial balance with dates similarly there is profit and loss statement here is the account titles debit credit entries and uh, current stock valuation cash in hand current bank balance with all this information this profit and loss statement can be uh, originated from this software so this is all about the account accounts menu is finished almost all functionality are covered now so let's proceed to the next one So the next menu is database backup here and here as well and the first sub menu there automatic backup so let's click first one a screen appear with the title automatic database backup and there is some message automatic backup is already operational no action needed very simple understandable you don't have to do anything it's already working and what is the detail of this message the database is already be backed up on a daily basis at 11 59 almost 12 o'clock every day even if the computer is turned off when you will turn on the pc you will find the backup in its assigned folder if you want to change this setting or change the backup folder location please contact to the software developer for any change in the current setting please contact software developer so this is the message so now i will show you where this database backup is uh, available so here is the folder in my pc which i have assigned for this automatic database backup option in this folder uh, database backup is automatically created on a certain time which I have mentioned in the backup coding. If my PC is turned off at that time and whenever I make my PC on, on that day, the uh, backup is created of that day. So here I will tell you how the name of the database look like. I will show you. Actually, a database file name contain the current time and date. So that's why it's different from all of other files. I will explain you what are the meaning of these numbers which are mentioned in the name of database file. So as you people are watching, so 0306 mean 3rd June and then 2023 mean the year. 9 is the hour, 38 is the minutes and 26 are the seconds. So it's mean this file is created on 3rd June 2023 at 9 o'clock 38 minutes and 26 seconds. Similarly other files you can uh, understand by this pattern which I have told you and look at here date modified 3rd June 4th June 5th 6th 7th 8th then 1st July 2nd 3rd 4th 5th 6th 7th 8th 9 10 11 12 there is uh, one gap or perhaps i delete it i i often delete backup from this folder because it's 
it take a lot of space so here you can see the sequence every date is created automatically i don't have to do anything so this is how this functionality work automatic database backup automatic database backup is very good approach and it is very helpful in preventing data loss because of any reason so it should be the necessary component of every software so that's it from the database backup option the next functionality is manual backup so here the screen appear with the title database manual backup and here it's asking please browse or paste path so here from here you have to choose a particular folder path or directly you can paste a selective folder path here by pasting control v or right click paste so i paste some path here and then after this there is a label logical name for backup file optional it's mean that if you want to put some text with the backup uh, file for uh, easy to remember like i put a text after monthly closing it's for easy for remember okay now click backup database and backup complete message appears now go to the selective folder and see what happened there as you people are watching the last one dbs database backup taken on the current date and the time and this is the text which i just put for remembering after monthly closing so if you don't put still it will works with the uh, current date and current time but if you put it is good practice so like this manual database work the manual entry you can do many times as you want so that's it from the database manual backup the next option in the database backup is not available here for others it is available only here on uh, main menu bar but here the message appear only owner have access of restoration of the database at main menu bar so let's go and see the restore backup option as you click this some menu uh, message appear authentication for restore process and then message start attention please this is very serious matter mishandling in it can cause huge damage if unauthorized person use this option this can cause a massive blunder either intentionally or unintentionally by putting the wrong data in the wrong place that's the reason why only owner of the business can use this option so please confirm your identity again and for reconfirming please enter owner's password sorry for inconvenience so as the message says that sometimes it happens that uh, if you suppose if you uh, complete the month with data and uh, some uh, unauthorized person come and he, he back up the software in the beginning of the month so all month data can be lost so it is very important so that's the owner can do these things only so if you put password then you can enter in this functionality here restore database from the backup file please browse and select database file for restoration process from here you can select the path of the file where you save suppose i choose some path so after choosing appropriate path then you can restore database so after completion a message appear database restoration process completed successfully okay close it so in this way database restoration works so that's it this menu also finish the next menu is about which i have already explained in the beginning of the in the beginning of this video about application version the version of the application i have shown this in the beginning then the about and similarly about system hardware then the language menu you can change the language from here and then in the last way out sign out current user and exit application so that's it from the software functionalities explanation video thanks for watching